This is the Tea with NSP podcast. Hi, and welcome back to the best queer podcast, The Tea with NSP. I'm Morgan, co chair of National Student Pride and third year at King's College London. National Student Pride is a not for profit organisation which aims to empower LGBTQ young people and provide them with a wealth of opportunity. This episode and the entire series is only made possible by the support of our incredible sponsors. Clifford Chance have been supporters of NSP for nine years and a headline sponsor for 2021. If you've been to previous events, you might have taken part in their voguing workshop or seen Drag Races, Something Wong and Tia Coffee hosting their photo booth. Thank you Clifford Chance for your phenomenal support for the LGBTQ plus community. This week we have the beautiful Campbell Kenneford who talks us over exactly what it means to be trans in the modern age with online trolls, being a role model for others, attending fashion school and the barriers faced by trans people. Stick with us until the end to hear just which queer creative graces us next week and remember to subscribe and enjoy the tea with NSB and Campbell Kenneford. Now let's get this week on the road. Hello listeners, welcome to National Student Pride's newest podcast. I'm Rhys James and this is my good friend, David. David, could you tell us what we're doing here today? Yes, so uh, we're doing a podcast uh, about that kind of student life and that time in your life when you were kind of finding yourself um, and just a little bit of advice of, of kind of people that are past that and people that are here and people that are going through it at the same time. Amazing, that sounds great. Now, this episode, we have a very special guest, the incredibly beautiful and hilarious trans activist and icon, Campbell Kenneford. Hi. How are you, darling? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you. Good. Surviving this lockdown. Oh, God, tell me about it. I absolutely hate it. Oh, my lockdown God. Lockdown number two, let's get festive. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how has lockdown been going for you? Um, well, it's been okay because I've actually recently moved in with like my two best friends who are trans as well. And um, so it's kind of like, we're kind of like a bit excited still about moving in together. Mm. So it's actually going too bad. I can't complain really. Um, <laughs> but ready. I just want it to be summer and for us all, all to have fun again and like go to Pride and you know, I just want things to be normal so those things can happen. But fingers crossed it will. Yeah, I've got my fingers crossed. It's all a miss. Everything. Having a dance, having a good time. <laughs> oh, I don't. It seems like so far away, like, from doing that. But I think, yeah, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's nice, though, that you've got, you know, a nice little kind of house that you're spending with your friends. Good to have a little support network. Yeah. I, fun enough, moved first lockdown, and now I'm like, can I move again? Like, can I just do something? Um, So I guess kind of first question that we wanted to ask um, is mostly because, like, we will follow you outside of Student Pride on on social medias, and um, you are good with the comebacks. (laughs) Yeah. You're good at putting somebody in the place, which I love. Um, But how do you deal with that, those kind of, like, negative, shitty comments, basically? Yeah, I don't really know. I've always kind of never tried to let it get me down too much. Although it is extremely depressing that people hold these views. If you don't kind of have a bit of a sense of humour with it, I think it would just weigh me down completely. So in order for me to kind of like cope with that, I kind of have to make a joke about it. Otherwise, you know, the saying like, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. So I think it's like that. (laughs) As tragic as it sounds. But yeah, I've always just kind of, you know, wanted to put people in their place and you know wanted to educate people and I think if you kind of have that gateway of a bit of humor with it hopefully it can educate people instead of just you know completely going off on someone which believe me I've been tempted to do so many times and I have done um but yeah from like a young age I've I've always been a bit different so I've always dealt with people's comments from like when I've been like 12 years old so I've just learned to deal with it in the most healthy way that I can, I think. Mm-hmm. Is it ever been hard though? Like, is that something that used to get to you that you now like actually know, or has it just always been like a water off a duck's back? I think it it kind of like flip flops. Like sometimes I'm okay with that, but then obviously at the same time I am just a person with feelings as well. So things are bound to hurt hurt me. Um. So you know, there's times where I'm like, oh my god, um. 
I'll just respond to this one in a jokey way. But then there's sometimes like when it does really get me down. Um, but I think I've found that healthy balance of like social media and knowing when to step away and when mm. to not look at Twitter anymore or not look at my direct messages anymore or not post about being trans for a while. And I've, it's good that I found that balance to be able to do that. So it just kind of depends really like recently, um, like a couple of weeks ago, I went for like a really bad um, phase of like things really affecting me. Cause I think once you read so many things about yourself, you kind of start to believe it a little bit. Yeah. If people are telling you something about yourself, you eventually kind of like, oh wait, actually, you know, and I think that's the normal reaction. So yeah, there, there's times where I feel okay with it and times where I don't, um, but I guess that's just like what it's like being a person anyway. Sometimes you're okay to deal with things and sometimes you're not. So I just kind of take every day as it comes really, but also try to use the platform I have in the best possible way. Mm, that's so good. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so interested <laughs> in just listening to you talk. Um, uh, so you brought up obviously you being at a young age so we're going to go back in the time machine a little bit yeah um, so what was it like growing up at a young age and at school as well as a young trans person um well i think it's so different now as to, like to how it was when i went to school yeah to be fair i did have a lot of friends and a good support network <laughs> around me that really supported me like i had a um, all my friends were girls and if any of the boys kind of like picked on me they would kind of be like hey leave her alone you know so I, they kind of had my back a bit which is really good mm. um so I feel lucky in that aspect obviously I was called names every single day and I was kind of ridiculed a little bit um and I was kind of like the butt of people's jokes but at the same time I did as I said I had a good group of friends around me to support me um and being trans when I was at school I'm not old, but I'm not young anymore. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> so different when I went to school. Like I, um, I went. I grew up like in literally the middle of nowhere. So especially there compared to London, it was very different. And you know, when I first started transitioning at school, I was made to use like the disabled toilets instead of the girls. So they kind of didn't. They kind of accepted it, but they kind of like pushed me to the side. You know, like you know, just. Just do it, but not with the girls. Um, but now I actually went back to my school quite recently, not too long ago, and um, probably like a year ago, and they had like an LGBT wall dedicated to like being trans, being gay. And that for me, I was like, oh my God, like, do you know what? It has come a long way and things are changing. It does. It changes over a short amount of time as well. Because I remember yeah. being at school as well and secondary school, it seems like so far away, um, yeah. but it wasn't that far. Um, <laughs> that like it was the same. Like when I first went into secondary school, it was all very boys' toilets, girls' toilets, and then it wasn't until I think year ten, year eleven, maybe even sixth form, mm -hmm. did all of my school's toilets become unisex. So they oh, were like, really? "Oh, it doesn't matter what gender you are, just oh, go and go and have a shit." <laughs> yeah, that's so. I haven't heard of many schools doing like unisex, so that's good. It was a bit controversial. I remember like a lot of uh, parents being like, well, they'll just be shagging, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, yeah. I, did go, I did go to a bit of a uh, rough school. So, <laughs> oh. so you would have thought it would have happened. But surprisingly, no, it didn't. But, um, but yeah, I think they worked really well. And they were actually really nice. <laughs> yeah. What, what was that like, Campbell? Like, if Because I know what it's like being a, a gay man and... Uh, but I don't think it's even any way kind of similar to what it must be like being a trans kid going through the shit you get in school normally, but mm. then a whole other thing ad added onto it. Like, was it hard? Yeah, it was hard. And I'm sure, like, you can relate as, like, a gay male as well. Mm. Like, kind of, like, everyone knows... You're kind of, like, infamous. Mm. And, like, everyone knows who you are because you're, like, the different one. Um, so, I mean, I loved all the attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm well, but um, it it was hard and it was rough. But at the same time, I kind of see it as I had to go through that in order to, for me to get to the place where I am now, where I can help other people that are going through the same situation. So, as bad as it was, I kind of see it as a not a blessing. Like 
it's so hard to explain, but I see it as a good thing. And I've turned it into, I've turned such a negative into a positive. So I look back and I'm sad for like the, my younger self having to deal with those comments. But I know now it was for the greater good in order for me to get to this position now where I can help people that are going through the same thing. Um, like there's a girl that messaged me um, and she was like, oh, I went to the same school, I go to the same school as you did and I'm transgender and things have changed like so much. Like they let me use the girls' toilets and stuff. So, you know, I think maybe if I didn't transition at that school, then that might not have happened. So, you know, as much as it is bad, there's a lot of good that comes with it as well. That's a good mentality to have, to be fair. That's a mentality I've recently adopted where you just sort of like, you have to think of a positive, don't you? Otherwise, you're just going to sit there and cry. <laughs> exactly. You really, you've just got to kind of like turn the situation into a positive. And that's what I try to do with like everything, especially things like that, you know. Yeah, 100%. Did it affect your studies as well at school? It did. It really did because I went to sixth form after my GCSEs and I was so detached from reality. I was, like at school, I was okay. But when I reached sixth form, I started to get really depressed because I was waiting for my hormones. Yeah. And I was looking at myself in the mirror every single day and I'd be like, oh my God, I hate the way I look. Like, I'm just going to keep growing. I'm going to get taller. Um, my voice is going to get deeper. So it just kind of like really detached me from like my career, my education to the point where they were like, you can't actually go to the sixth form anymore because you're not going to pass. And like, I dropped out of sixth form because I was so detached from my education because I was so focused on my transition mm. it actually ended up ultimately affecting my education um so yeah it really did affect my education in that sense because I was putting so much pressure on my transition and I didn't feel like I received any support from my school um but yeah I think I, I didn't realize how bad it was at the time like I just wasn't ever going into school wasn't doing my work when I look back I'm like oh my god the I just thought I was really naughty and I couldn't be bothered but looking back I'm like I actually did it because I was so depressed within myself that I couldn't actually concentrate on anything else apart from my transition mm. what well, see one of the things because I think we're all as a whole organization like really passionate about trans rights and mm -hmm. We uh, recorded a podcast on Monday and we went off on one doing the same thing, to be honest, because we were just like, it's yeah. bu it's bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's horrific. It's the same shit that gay men were going through 20 years ago. And yes. you now have an idea that you think you're above it. Does my nothing. So I'm no, I, I, I've moaned about it for 20 minutes last podcast, so I can't do it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was like... So I've got a lot of friends that are teachers. Like, is, is there anything that teachers and education can do in general to make that better for people that are trans at that age? I'm not really sure. I think just get yourself, if you're like a teacher and you are wanting to educate your students, just you have to get educated yourself before you do that. So look at as many resources as you can. Um, there's so many good organisations out there. Mermaids is a really good one that supports... Um, transgender youth specifically um, there is another one called Not A Phase um, who my friends Danny and Jackie um, co-own that and Not A Phase is really good at giving lots of information but really accessibly so it really kind of it's like an easy it's like a beginner's guide to how to be a good transgender ally and how to educate other people so it's really easy to digest mm. um, and you know if someone is feeling a bit different in your class then obviously you kind of have to have boundaries but also just be respectful and mindful of that as well because yeah. essentially you're there to kind of like shape a, like a child's life and that's what being at school does so if you have those core values when it's when you're at school it will affect your adulthood as well 100 percent. it's like asking as well but in a respectful way isn't it like as long as yeah exactly yeah. i think so many people especially now are so afraid to ask those questions 
But in order for us to move forward and educate people, those awkward questions do have to be asked. Um, and I think that's something I've accepted recently. Obviously, I have my boundaries and I know what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. But at the same time, if you don't ask some questions, then how can we expect people to learn? Yeah. But I think at the same time, people need to realise that themselves because there's just certain things you don't talk about in general. So yeah. why would you then want to ask? Legs. What genitals do you have? Yeah, like, like that's so weird. That so weird. Like I actually cannot comprehend that people like think that an okay question to ask. Like it's so random. Like why do why are people so obsessed with knowing what you have? It's so weird, isn't it? Oh, it's, weird. I can't fathom it. <laughs> so after eighteen, after after school, um, did you go to uni, or what was that like? Just after sixth form. Well, I got basically essentially thrown out of sixth form. So after a few months, so I couldn't really do anything for a while. So I was there for like four or five months. And obviously like the new terms begin the next year and nowhere would really accept me like to come in a bit late. Um, so I literally kind of like did nothing almost. Sat in my room, watched videos on YouTube of people transitioning and hoped one day I could reach that level. <laughs> so that's what I used to do literally every single day. And it became like an obsession. I'd literally just watch videos and videos and videos of transition videos, people being on hormones. So that's literally what I did until the next time came. Um, and then I went to college. So I studied fashion retail. But it was a college that was kind of near my house. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody knew who I was and not in a good way either. Like I would go into college and I remember once this man, well, this boy, he was my age, like 17 or whatever. He was like, are you a tranny? And I've heard you're a tranny and would just say the most horrible things. And literally I thought he was going to beat me up. And after that, I was literally like, I cannot go back to this college. Like... Everyone knows who I am. I'm literally a laughing stock and I can't continue being called names every single day and trying to learn about something I'm passionate about. So again, I left college um, and I kind of didn't have any qualifications except my GCSEs, weren't, which weren't even that great either. <laughs> um, so yeah, like my transition really, really did affect my education and my ability to kind of have any qualifications in that sense because it literally overcame my life and that's all my life revolved around I was like when am I getting my hormones when can I get my boots on when am I getting my gender reassignment surgery and it kind of consumed me in that sense so after that I just kind of started like full-time employment like I got um like an internship in London, like doing fashion, which is what I wanted to do at that time. Um, but yeah, again, I kind of see it, I kind of see it as something that was meant to happen on my journey, really. It's so annoying that pe like, people's words have put you, like put you and kept you away from your education. Like that's- I feel robbed. Yeah. <laughs> The robbed queen. Here we are. <laughs> I'm the robbed queen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know exactly. Like, I th like, did either of you ever feel that at school, like with being gay or anything or a bit different? Did you find it like, did you kind of, were you robbed like me? <laughs> did you flip the script, Campbell? <laughs> yeah, so flipped it right over. Um, <laughs> So we, me and Reese have just done, uh, we're doing a share your story thing that we posted on, mm. on uh, Student Pride. And so I came out when I was 14, uh, Reese, you were 13, was it? Yeah. Uh, so I came out and my best friend, me and her got in an argument and it was a horrific, like literally the whole school basically fell out of me because she told everybody I was gay, told the guy who I fancied, who was one of my best mates and straight. <laughs> oh no <laughs> then we're on like uh it was actually yahoo messenger now i'm sure my age um and, oh, yeah oh. i know <laughs> i know um and i was like i don't want to do it anymore i don't want to fight and she was like well kill yourself then and uh. i was like what are you talking about and she's like put your camera on though because i want to see it like i want to see you kill yourself oh, right now 
so I actually applied for college right after that, ready to leave uh, school, um, yeah. and went to go do uh, TV production, and at the last minute decided against it and stayed in, because because we ended up making up, and I was yeah. like, so I I did I went to uni and I did my whole thing, but it was only because that one girl kind of stopped. Uh, really. Kind of- how much like at school like being lgbt like not having that support like or education like it just shows you how much it does affect like your life and it like you're you kind of feel like you're missing out like for example things like you know like when you go to the prom Mm. i felt like i never had my prom moment because i was too embarrassed and Mm. i feel like i should have been the prom queen and i never got that We'll have yeah. a prom for student pride. We'll have a prom. That's it. <laughs> there you go. Queen, on, honorary prom queen, Campbell. So, in this internship, what was like? What was that like applying for it? Because one of the things that we love is different methods into kind of a working life. Basically, like it doesn't matter if you went to uni, but like the way that you kind of got over the hurdles and stuff like that. Um, yeah, what was that like applying? Was does what was it like basically leaving that environment as well? Do you know what I mean? Like getting away? Yeah. Um, I mean, even though I kind of got an internship and everything and started working in London, it didn't really change much in terms of how I felt about myself. So, um, you know, I would get so many looks on the street and that would just affect my self-confidence. Um, so even when I was felt really independent and felt like I was working I still felt even like more more ostracized in a way because there was an apparent difference between me and the other girls doing the internship like they just seemed so carefree and like I felt like I couldn't be that carefree and I had all these extra pressures obviously being a teenage girl is really difficult anyway um with all of like everything that comes with it and then being a teenage girl and being trans I felt like I I was just a bit bitter I was like why do I have to have this like it's not fair so I kind of started to resent being trans a bit um and I remember like I had an internship and it was like my first day and like I was like I had long blonde hair and I was wearing girls clothes and the um woman was like I'm so happy to have our first boy on our internship and I was literally like what? And like, the cheek. I'm so embarrassed. I know the absolute nerve of it. And do you know what? It wasn't even that long ago. Like I'm 25 now, and so it would have been like when I was about 18. Actually, do you know what? <laughs> I'm not as young as I thought. Maybe seven years ago. Okay, it was a while ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, but still, like seven years ago, like when's that? 2013. Still, it's like. I can't believe, I was literally in shock that that happened. So that kind of affected my confidence as well. I thought, you know, I'm going to London, I'm going to an adult workplace to get away from this transphobia, and then I'm still receiving it. Mm-hmm. So that kind of knocked my confidence a little bit as well. Especially, like, moving to a city that is very diverse in culture and, and gender and sexuality. Like, you kind of don't yeah. expect it, do you? Yeah, I thought, you know, I'm moving to London, I'm going to be accepted, everyone's going to love me, and then... I was like, she's like, hi, boy. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> it's, you put so much um, expectations, though, don't you, onto London? I don't know about you, Reese, because you're from London. So no, I'm not. Well, <laughs> ish. Close, you're, you're closer than I was. Um, but I remember moving down from Glasgow, I was like, oh, it's going to be fantastic. No one's going to have any of the problems. And then you're like, oh God, they're just here. They're just times by 10 because there's more people. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like when you move to London as like a gay person or LGBT, I feel like it does kind of change you a lot. And mm-hmm. I feel like I would recommend, obviously staying in your t- towns is fine, but for trans people, if I didn't go to London to discover myself further, then I don't think I would be where I am now. And I feel like it's quite important if you're from a small town, especially if being trans, it's quite important to go to a bigger city and explore your options because your small town that you're in isn't the be and end all. You need to go out and you need to really explore your 
identity and meet like-minded people. That's what I found really helpful anyway. Yeah, because you sort of find your family, don't you, when you move to a bigger city? Like for me, it was meeting all these gay people. And I was like, yes, I'm not the yeah. only gay. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we wanted to ask was, it's quite similar to before of, um, you've got this kind of like quite inspirational power about you. When, you know, when I, like, when I hear you speak, I'm like, she knows what she's talking about. She's mm. like, I, I, I really get into it. But where does that come from? Is that from like the shitty times and persevering or, or has that just always been there? Um, I think, yeah, it's kind of just came from that. Like, as I said, when I was very young, like 12, I was wearing a full face of makeup to school every single day. And from then, it's kind of been 13 years of a bit of ridicule. And I feel like once you go that long, with people disagreeing with your identity and saying stuff about you, you just develop this confidence and this thick skin as, and that's what I've done. I mean, it's taken a long, it's been a long journey to get to the point where I am now. And it hasn't been, it's only been within the last few years where I felt I've built that confidence up and I've built that barrier to deal with it. Um, because I actually, so I did a TV show called Gender Quake a couple of years ago. I think it was two years ago. Um, and, before then, I was a bit ashamed to be trans. I kind of felt a bit, like, worn down from all the things I'd faced. And then when I went on that show, it kind of gave me this, like, confidence to be like, do you know what, this is who I am. I'm proud. And I don't actually need anyone to accept me as a woman because I am a woman and no one can tell me different. Um, and if I feel like I, if I didn't do that show, then I probably wouldn't feel like this. And I would probably maybe still feel a bit, like worn out from it but from then I've just felt this like new lease of life where I'm just like this is who I am and I'm gonna speak up for myself I'm gonna speak up for like younger trans people and I really do want to make a difference um, whilst doing that so I mean it's taken a good few years but I'm here now and I'm happier than ever really. So from when you were younger did you want to be a role model for other trans kids? Um, not really. I never really thought about it, really. Like, it kind of happened by accident. Yeah. Like, I did a TV show and I wasn't really sure where it would lead. Um, but when I was younger, I didn't have any trans role models. There's not really anyone I could think of that was trans. Um, I mean, you had people like Pete Burns in the media. And I was on MySpace. Like, Jeffree Star was my idol. I used to have like pictures of him printed out from my space and that's like all I remember of like a boy wearing makeup and someone being a bit different um yeah and Pete Burns was in the media and then the only other times I think I watched Big Brother and Nadia was on that and that's the kind of first time I saw a trans person I thought oh my god like this can happen um so I really didn't have any role models when I was younger to look up to to want to be but the landscape is just so different now where you have things like TikTok, you have Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, where all of these like really powerful, strong trans people are making a difference. And I feel like it would, it helps so many people. Like I get messages all the time saying that I've helped someone. And if it wasn't for me posting on social media and doing like things like things like this podcast and helping people, then they wouldn't be where they are today. Um, and I kind of, wish I had that when I was younger but I'm kind of I feel really lucky and grateful and happy that I can be that person for someone that was like me um and I think that's like a really great thing and yeah that's it really <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing so what was it like you come down to London right and what was your like experience like with the LGBT community was it kind of open armed or like was it kind of getting used to that it, it was very open armed because i the reason i wanted to move to london is because i made a lot of friends online that were from london and then most of my friends i met were from online um and i kind of met them and they kind of like took me under their wing and if it wasn't for like a lot of gay people supporting me in my transition and you know i wouldn't have had such a smooth ride um so, you know, coming to London, it was so exciting. I had all these, these people that, like, were really supportive of me and, you know, wanted to look after me in a sense because I was a bit, like, I was quite young and I was transgender and, like, they they wanted to, like, 
look after me basically which was really good but at the same time when we used to go out gay people I found were some of the most transphobic comments I've received from people like I'd go to Soho and without a doubt there wouldn't be a time where I wouldn't be asked if I was either a tranny a boy a crossdresser a drag queen or something like there would and it was always from gay people so I think gay people and LGBT people have always been my biggest supporters and have helped me for everything but at the same time I think a lot of people think because they're in that community it gives them a right to ask you questions yeah. whereas a lot of straight gender people have just left me alone and just been like you know just do you but I think being trans and being in the LGBT community it they think it gives you gives them a right to ask you those questions like I remember I had a job and I, I was really close with this like gay guy and I was like oh my god we're such good friends and we'd never spoken about my transition he's one day he turned around and said, said to me he was like so what was your name before and I was just like oh my god like I felt like really a bit betrayed because I just thought I felt I thought I brought up a lot of trust with him and I thought that it was fine but then you know someone to turn around and say that you were like oh okay guess not then um so yeah it's been like a mix of amazing support but also small-minded and ignorance was well, is education in it like regardless of whether you're gay or straight or bisexual whatever it's about education and um like you know coming from Glasgow like I said like had never met a trans person um had never you know experienced the no to be blunt but shit that they have to go through um mm-hmm. I, and it wasn't until i think i got to london about seven years ago and i was like i i, get, <laughs> I got really pissed off do you know what i mean like and not in a case where i'd met anybody i was just like just g- normal genuine empathy for a, a group of people that were getting shit on to an extreme stat like state that used to really affect me. Um, so I, I spent a long time just trying to get a bit. I mean, nobody's perfect, you know what I mean. But like, just get a bit more educated of what was going on. And I, th- I think there'll be so much more that we as gay men and and, and lesbians and bisexual people need to do to just kind of open that up again and just make it a bit more of a proper community. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And I do really think there's been a change in attitudes towards trans people from other LGBT people. Like, I think I see so much, like, support from people I follow um, and people in general, like, and it's just such a great thing to see how far it has come. I agree with with everything you both just said. Like, I was fortunate enough to grow up around trans people. So I went to school with trans people and sixth form. So like, I'm I'm lucky enough to experience that and have that education already. But I think a lot of people don't obviously have access, but then also don't want to, which I think is really Mm -hmm. wild. Do you know what I mean? But that's why things like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok are really good because I think you can't really go on your timeline without seeing a trans person nowadays, I think. So there is that information out there and there is that awareness and um, education. And if someone chooses to ignore that now, they're just ignorant because Mm. you can't not miss it nowadays, I don't think. There's trans people in the media, there's trans personalities online, there's trans people on TV, well, kind of. But if you're choosing to ignore that now, then I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> You're transphobic, love. Transphobic, <laughs> love. That's on trans- <laughs> um, You mentioned a couple of times about like online communities and that helping you. So was that a big factor in kind of growing up, finding yourself, like finding other like-minded people online? Yeah, exactly. Like from when I was born really though, um, my nan is a lesbian um, so she was with a woman when I was born. So I was always kind of surrounded by that. And I just saw that as a normal thing, which I think really helped me. Um, and yeah, when I was growing up online, as I said, I was on MySpace, Bebo. I was kind of all on those like social media platforms. And I think I met so many people and spoke to so many people. And I was on all these forums. And then 
that helped me find my identity essentially is being able to speak to like-minded people or people that were at the end of their transition and I used to like harass them every single day asking them like questions and things that I was so looking forward to experiencing myself like starting hormones I was like what does it feel like when you take your first hormone <laughs> so you know it was good to have access to that and I feel I feel really bad for people that didn't have that, that are like going generations back. Like, you know, someone like Caitlyn Jenner, like mm. there was no kind of like access back then for people. And I, I, I do really feel for people that come out at a later age, but I'm so happy for them at the same time that they can now live their life. And I think due to the internet, that is happening a lot. Is there any spaces as well, just like if anyone's wondering where that you went to that you got help from like other than uh bear maids in oh, I, I went on a forum it's called susan's transgender forum um i don't know i haven't been on it for years and years so i don't know if that is still there but that is one that i use i think it's called susans.org um and it's just a forum of people talking about their lived in experiences there's different sections for if you're thinking about transitioning or if you've had your surgery or if you've had um, if you're starting hormones so there's all these different um, sections for which stage of your transition you're at and reading those people's stories and interacting with people really kind of like gave me hope and kind of made me look forward to reaching that stage of my journey and also YouTube obviously everyone knows about YouTube and I, I look to people on that as well. <laughs> Uh, my my final question I don't know if any David's got any more is that is there anything you would go back and change about your younger life that's a good question I kind of feel like yes and no because I'm like a big believer in everything happens for a re well most things happen for a reason not everything obviously but I think the decisions you make put you on the path you're at now and if I didn't go through the experiences that I went through when I was younger or made the decisions that I did, then I wouldn't be at this stage now talking to you both and, you know, like potentially educating other people and helping situations for the greater good. So I actually honestly don't think there's anything I would change. I would have done everything exactly the same, even though it might have hurt so much at that time. Um, I mean, I transitioned quite young. Maybe you transition even younger. That would be one, maybe. But um, yeah, that's it, really. I'm I'm really happy with all the decisions I've made. Maybe for my prom, I felt like I didn't have enough confidence to like go as my true self. So I kind of went for like this <laughs> androgynous kind of look, um, which isn't really me. Um, so maybe I would have done, had enough bravery and confidence to be like, this is me and be like that. So that, that's my only regret, really. Yeah. I get well, a similar vein, I guess. If you're looking back, like, is there any advice you would give to your 18 year old self again? I would just say, just keep on doing what you're doing, really. Like, the things you're going through now, the transphobia you're experiencing, the discrimination, you know, the looks you're getting on the street is going to hurt so much then. But one day you're going to learn that those things happened for you to have the mindset that you do now and to have such an impact on young transgender people. Um, and yes, as, ma as many hardships as you're going to go through, you're going to come out the other side and, you know, it's so cheesy, but, you know, like the saying, it gets better. Like, it really, really does get better. And you have to remember that. Keep yourself surrounded by your friends, your family, if you can, um, your loved ones, and, you know, just, just keep going. Like, you're, you're, go you're doing amazing. And don't be too hard on yourself as well. I was so hard on myself when I was young I was like I was 18 I was like oh wow I haven't had this yet I haven't had this yet but I had come so far and I don't think I gave myself enough credit so yeah just give myself more credit um and just know that things will get better 
that's a, a lovely way to end it on that, isn't it? That's the... <laughs> so my heart just like, oh. <laughs> that has been absolutely perfect, Campbell. Um, well, but, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, and thank you so much for um, coming and thanks so much for supporting NSP in the past as well, that you've been fantastic. Oh, no, of course, yeah. I think it's it's so good. Like, I, if I was at uni, then, you know, it would be great. <laughs> but I'm not at uni. Um, but, you know, I think it's such a great um, thing to do, yeah. And, oh, last question. Is there anything you would like to, to plug before we cut off? <laughs> um, you could just follow me on Instagram, Campbell Canaford, and Twitter, Campbell Exo. Um, and also use some resources if you don't feel like I've educated you enough or, you know, go on to Mermaids, go on to Not A Phase, um, support trans people. And, you know, if you see, like, sign a petition or something, that's a good way to be a transgender ally. So I would just say, yeah, look up online at some information, how you can help trans people. Um, and not just trans people like me, other trans people, like trans people of colour, trans people that are in other countries that don't have the luxuries that we do, how you can support them. So, yeah. Amazing. Love that. Yeah, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much. It was great speaking to you, Bye. I feel like Campbell has such an interesting outlook on modern queer life, and she speaks so well about trans and queer teenagedom. Drumroll, please, for next week. We have the gorgeous Ollie Pike, children's author, illustrator, and YouTuber. He talks about his time in theatre, what it was like growing up gay, and understanding the wider LGBTQ community. All our episodes go live on Thursdays, so subscribe to the podcast to get notified and make sure you don't miss a thing. And don't forget, tickets are now available for National Student Pride 2021. Just head to our website, studentpride.co.uk, and get your free tickets now to our week-long event starting April 19th. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm Morgan, but you can call me Mimi. And I'll see you next week for more Queer Rambles. Bye!